Hey guys, Jason Shellcross with the Fantasy Football Sackos here, back again with episode 11. Today, Alex and I are going to be talking about our top tight ends for the upcoming 2020 season. Stay with us. Hey guys, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, do what you got to do, YouTube world. Uh, for everybody else, follow us on social media at the FF Sackos and go ahead and check out our website, the fantasy football sackos.com for everything you need fantasy football this season. Let's go. Welcome to the fantasy football Sackos podcast with your hosts, Jason Shalcross and Alex Krogh. Let's go! Fantasy football sackos. We're in double digit episodes. Welcome to episode 11. Alex and I are going to be going deep on some tight ends today. So deep. We're going to do it together. Deep and tenderly. Alex, how was your 4th of July? It was okay. Uh, I got to see some people I hadn't seen in a while uh, up in Wisconsin. I know you were up there too. Sure uh, we was. Were not there. We were not there together. Uh, so it was a good time just to kind of hang out and uh, and see some people, relax a little bit, and celebrate uh, what many consider to be the greatest country in the world. Uh, I'm among them, and it's it's you know I I don't know when fireworks became a thing. But I really, really like them until after like 11, 15, and I'm trying to go to sleep. And I think that might qualify, qualify me as being old. 11, 50. You can't make it to midnight on the 4th no. of July. Well, no, I just like want to go to bed. Uh, uh, so you make it, but you're just not you're like you're miserable. Yeah. So like I was laying in bed probably about 11 o'clock on the 4th after seeing some fireworks. And they're great until you want them to go away. <laughs> so my uh my family i think is a little bit more your speed my uh my uncle started lighting off fireworks at uh at like 7 p.m that's a little early <laughs> there's like two hours of daylight left <laughs> yeah. yeah i feel like 9 to 11 is like the sweet spot but after that like I'm good. We had, we had a couple too many cocktails, and so it felt like nine or ten p.m. There you go. And uh, thank nobody. Well, nobody was seriously injured, but uh, <laughs> we were much safer the next day. <laughs> you, you didn't uh, blow one of your thumbs off, like uh, well, there was no Jason Pierre Paul incident. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I don't know if that was there were no Jason Pierre Paul Roman candle wars going on. No. Um we we did, however, uh severely damage a boat dock. <laughs> like with a pontoon boat? You no. just like ran into it? No, 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 no. Like a firework was lit off oh, on it okay. on the dock and it did not shoot up into the air like it should have. Instead it may have exploded in the tube. So Oops. Yeah. Lesson learned. Lesson learned. But happy fourth, everyone. Ours was a little explosive. Ah, but it was a good time. That was a really bad pun. And, and I would say that doesn't even count the next day after drinking all that beer. Oh, my God. Oh, we're not about poop jokes. You should have held up the emoji when you said Sorry, it. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had it. You only have one shot. Oh, there you go. Um, well, I'm glad you had a good fourth and I missed you. you. Yeah. I, I got a haircut too. So the, the shagginess is trimmed down a little bit. Got I, to, got, got to trim up the beard. So I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm ready for a kid to get here now. Uh, the, I took some vacation days off of real work. The last wow. days, so, so now I'm, I'm kind of refreshed and ready to go. So I did notice that the sick flow from last week is now gone. Yeah. Was that your decision or, or the missus? No, it was, it was my decision. It was, okay. it was time, time for it to, to <laughs> slow down a little bit. Gotcha. Well, you look as handsome as ever, and we can't wait Thanks. for the little one to get here. Yeah. All right. Dad do. Dad do. There you go. Um, 
For anybody that doesn't know, we do have a website. We are Talking Tight Ends today. You can find all of our rankings at www.thefantasyfootballsackos.com. Please like, subscribe, hit that bell on YouTube so that way you're notified of all of our episodes and support the pod. And uh, we're going to be putting out in celebration of uh, the 4th of July. And I think, is your birthday coming up or is it just mine? Yeah, two weeks. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Okay. Well, in celebration of some summer, early fall birthdays, I think we're going to put up some embarrassing kid photos of us. So look for that on social media at the FF Sackos everywhere. Um, all right, let's, let's get into some actual sports related news. Uh, the only story that's really been running the last 24, 48 hours, Pat Mahomes signed, I think what will be like the largest contract in either well i know nfl history i'm not sure about professional sports but half a billion dollars in total monies and 10 well it's a 12-year contract because it's 10 years added on to the two he has left an obscene amount of guaranteed monies with like mechanics where if something isn't guaranteed he can opt out of it just all sorts of insanity for uh for the Kansas City Chiefs and Pat Mahomes. What uh, what do you think of it? I'm kind of jealous because the Bears drafted Mitch Trubisky, so we have to live with that for the rest of our lives. And but it saved us money, right? We generational <laughs> quarterback. <laughs> we, yeah, it did. Uh, we it's saved not my some, money. We saved it's some not my money. money. <laughs> so you, uh, you wish that we were paying up instead of Kansas God, City? man. Yeah. So here's the thing for Kansas City. So you lock in what's potentially going to be one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Yeah. The biggest thing that they're going to have to worry about is how do you construct your team around having that much cap space locked into a quarterback? When you look at past Super Bowl winners, generally, with the exception of really Tom Brady or Peyton Manning, or maybe even Eli Manning. Well, Most it's hard the, to say except for Tom when he's won six of them. Well, right, yeah. But the, all of these quarterbacks are either on their rookie deal still or were just extended. And, you know, so they, they had, not fully, had not fully felt the entire wrath of having your cap locked up like that. So what is that going to mean for, are you going to be able to re-sign Travis Kelsey? Are you going to be able to re-sign Tyree Kill? Does that mean like a Mikol Hardman is going to, you know, they're just going to have to keep drafting really fast wide receivers and hope that they pan out and have Mahomes have them be good, you know, a little bit to a certain extent, like the Green Bay Packers did with Aaron Rodgers, where they locked in this huge contract. But unless you're supporting him, it's hard to make a team great unless they have great skill players around him. So that's going to be their biggest issue. Now, when you have one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, potentially, you'll probably be fine. But that, that's like the only only issue that I potentially see with, with their team construction. And if anything, they're not going to be able to spend as much on defense going forward, so it'll make him even a better fantasy quarterback down the line. So I'm, I'm excited about that. I, I love watching Pat Mahomes play. I'm super jealous that um, the Bears had a chance to take him and didn't. I will forever, yeah, be jealous of a couple of the quarterbacks that were drafted after Mitch that year, not just Mitch Trubisky. But yeah, congrats to Pat Mahomes. That's awesome. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, the person that actually broke the story was the clerk at the gas station who uh, <laughs> the chief staffer went in to buy bottles of champagne to celebrate. And so this like random uh, like gas station or I don't know, liquor store clerk broke the story two hours before Adam Schefter got a hold of it. Yeah, that's wonderful. So props to the props to them. Yep. Um, do we have we also have the NFL Players Association unanimously, I believe, recommending to skip the preseason games altogether. How do you feel about that? Yeah, Robert Griffin tweeted something saying he had sources that said the preseason was getting canceled. Uh, we talked either last episode or two episodes ago about there only being two preseason games. Um, you know, we also have major league baseball going back now and they're having issues with getting their players tested. And so if, if they can't 
figure it out for baseball teams. How are they going to figure it out for the NFL teams, which is twice the size? And, you know, a bunch of basketball teams have, have shut down their training camps, getting ready for the NBA season to start up again, too. So there, there's a lot of issues but from a preseason game perspective. I guess at this point, who really cares? Right. Yeah, um, it's it's just a preseason game. I'm, I'm good with just getting rid of them and get all the players healthier to the start of the season. And please just let there be football. Yeah, we're getting down to the nitty gritty, though. You know, there's a lot of decision, decisions that have to be made soon. Um, we're only about, what, eight weeks, nine weeks out from football. So it's yeah. uh, getting to be that time. But yep. please right. let there be football. Please let there be football. 2020 has been bad enough. <laughs> yeah. One <All> right. star. <laughs> I'm going to speak to the manager. Okay. Now, what everybody's been waiting for, Jason and Alex, Alex and Jason, going real deep on some tight ends. Let's go. Tight end number one, consensus, Travis Kelsey. I know it's shocking for everyone. Uh, Alex and I both have him ranked as number one. ESPN is ranked, has him ranked at number one. His average draft position is uh, just about 20, which would be the middle to the end of the second round. Um, can I okay. can I drop drop some knowledge real quick before we kind of hop into Kelsey? OK, so Out of knowledge. So this is weird, but I look at tight ends a little bit differently where I think to be a tight end one, you have to be in the top six. And after, after the top six, I consider you a tight end two. So I, because it's such a unique position, that's a little more shallow as far as to the top, you know, there's definitely a top tier and then there's lower tiers below that. And I know tight end ones are technically one through 12, but I really do look at it like it's one through six, seven through 12 as tight end twos, uh, 13 through whatever, 18 math. Uh, is it, your really your tight end threes, and you you don't want to be dipping below that. Obviously, similar to wide receivers, it makes sense that uh, the people that have the most targets are the top tight ends. So if you were top six in targets last year as a tight end, you were the top one of the top six tight ends without exception. Top six in targets were were the top six tight ends. The following six tight ends. Uh, so for my my tight end twos, uh, the next six in targets were all tight end twos, except for one. Uh, Jared Cook Jr. was not in the top 12 because he had nine touchdowns, I think, or something like that. Uh, we'll get we'll be talking about him a little bit. Uh, and uh, Greg Olson was the one who snuck in there, who was not in the top top 12 in targets, but ended up um, or, you know, what I'm saying. So it, ultimately, it's all about targets still, even for tight ends. Uh Travis Kelsey last year was the number one tight end. Uh, he was the number one in targets. He was number one in yards. He was number one in receptions. Um, he had five touchdowns, which is tied for fifth most. So theoretically, you'd actually see him have some progression in the tight end um, rankings because of him not having, you know, a bunch of bunch of touchdowns. And that was without Tyree Kill being there. Um, just for reference points, because some leagues do let you play tight ends in the flex spot. Um, he would have been wide receiver 12 last year or running back 14. Uh, so from that standpoint, he was flexible um, as a basically a, a top top tier. You know, it's, you know, he's what, like 25th or thereabouts in, in rankings, 26th. So. He, he was that good, and I don't know how much else there is to really say about him other than he's playing with Pat Mahomes, and he should be great, and he should probably be the number one tight end off the board. Uh, I'll back you up here. So Travis Kelsey was first in tight end targets last year. Uh, no tight end had more targets than he did at 136. Uh, he was second in targets per game at eight and a half targets per game. I'll get into why that is um, a little bit later. Uh, the Chiefs were 15th in total attempts last year. His uh, target share of all tight ends having uh, a target share of the attempts of their uh, 
the total passes of the their respective offenses. Travis Kelsey commanded the highest target share among all tight ends at almost 24% of all passes in that offense. Uh, he is, I mean... That, that offense is Travis Kelsey. I think he missed Pat Mahomes a couple weeks that he was gone. Um, <laughs> again, he did only have five touchdowns. Touchdowns are such a fluky stat. He had 10 the year before with only six more catches. So I have no reason to doubt that he can't get back to double digit uh uh, touchdowns. Kansas City was fifth in tight end target percentage as a percentage of all of their pass attempts. Um t- Almost 28% of all Kansas City passes went to the tight end, and they were they threw the fourth most targets to the tight end position at 155. So really tight end heavy offense, um, clear cut number one guy there. High powered offense. Got Pat Mahomes. You got Tyreek Hill um, with no clear running back. I think that kind of helps those guys too. We'll see if uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire is able to emerge this season. Um, but yeah, clear cut tight end one. No doubt. And, and then moving on tight end number two consensus, George Kittle. You and I both have him at two. ESPN has him ranked at two. The ADP, his current ADP is a shave under 23 overall, which puts him at the end of the second round. What do you like about Kittle? So number two tight end last year, uh, for comparison's sake, he was the number 21 wide receiver. He was the number 19 running back. Uh, he was fourth, fourth in receptions, fourth in tight end targets, uh, third in tight end yards. Uh, he also had five touchdowns, which is tied for the fifth most as a tight end. I, and he missed I, some time. And, and he missed two weeks. So yeah. that's the thing with him. Basically, him and Kittle – or sorry, him and Kelsey had the exact same points per game when they played last year. So I really do think it's pretty close as far as uh, one versus two here or closer than you would initially think. Uh, there is no potential Debo to start the year um, as the wideout for the 49ers, Debo Samuels. Uh, and so George Kittle had 1,300 yards, 13, almost 1,400 yards two years ago. Uh, when he was healthy the whole year and he was dinged up for a good portion of last year. And he, he was still easily tight end two uh, with quote, you know, 1050 yards and was, is just obviously a beast. So I, I do think you could justify him going number one. Uh, he was 25 points behind Kelsey in a half PPR league. Um I think you could see Kelsey's targets actually drop because of Tyree kill being healthy. And I think you could see Kittle's targets bumping. If Debo Samuels doesn't start the year and Emmanuel Sanders is gone. Uh, so I, the logic. So I, I do think they're actually very close. And if, <clears throat> if one's gone uh, and, and that's kind of your strategy is to take a, take a tight end at the second round. I, I don't think that there's that big of a difference between Kelsey and Kittle. Yeah. Um, I guess I think his target share might increase, um, which could put him over the top and maybe potentially help him top Kelsey. So he was fourth in tight end targets. He had 107. Um, He averaged about seven and a half targets a game. However, again, the 49ers were 49th in passing attempts last season, or I'm sorry, 29th in passing attempts last season. So again, they didn't really throw the ball all that much. However, when they did, uh, a majority of the time went to Kittle it, uh, with a target share of 22 and a half uh, tied for second uh, with Travis Kelsey. So really high target share. And then you lose Debo for a few weeks, probably most likely to start the season on the pup. And then uh, you also lose Emmanuel Sanders. I would not be surprised. I don't think the the overall pass attempts go up, but I wouldn't be surprised if his target share did and uh, potentially made him the clear cut number one this season. Um, had five touchdowns last season. San Francisco had the fourth highest target uh, percentage at 28% of all their passes went to the tight end last season. And they were seventh in overall tight end targets at 131. So again, offense, uh, the, the offense runs through that tight end position. 
All righty. Uh, moving on to consensus tight end three, Zach Ertz. We, you and I both have him ranked at three. ESPN has him at three as well. This is where, I mean, if you want to talk about ADP and what you have to pay up for to get a guy, Travis Kelsey is ADP is at 20th overall. Kittles is at 23 overall. Then you have 20 picks before you get to Zach Ertz, who's currently going at about 45th overall or the end of the fourth round for Zach Ertz. I really like that value for him there because from, you know, as we talked about when we started here, I look at tight end ones as being one through six. And if you can lock in one of the tight end ones, I think you have to do it. And if you don't have to take him in round two to do it, I think taking him in at the end of round three or the beginning of round four is overly reasonable to be taking Zach Ertz just because he's been Mr. Consistency the last couple of years. Uh, so fifth tight end last year, uh, wide receiver 24, running back 20. If you were to look at flexes, uh, third in reception, second in targets, third in yards, six TDs, which is tied for the fourth most from the tight end spot. Uh, I mean, he's Carson Wentz's go-to guy. But you don't know what Jeffrey's health is going to be. You don't know if uh, Jackson's going to keep posting anti-Semitic things on Instagram. Oh and my so, god! And so I don't. I know that that Carson Wentz is going to throw Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard the ball, and Zach Ertz is the number one wide receiver in that offense. And I don't. I don't care where he's lining up, but. If if that's the ADP on on Zach Ertz and I can get him in the fourth round, then then sign me up because I, I think you. This might just be me, and this sounds weird, but I feel like the teams that win the title in fantasy football the most are the teams that have a good tight end. I, I don't think you can miss on the position. I think you have to have a good one, and so if you can get Ertz a little bit later and lock in a tight end one value, because unless he gets hurt, he's going to produce for you. So I, I love him in that spot. Yeah. I would feel so risky if I'm drafting at the end of the third, like at the, you know, 10, 11, 12 spot, I would feel so risky playing the ADP game and passing on him and hoping he gets back to me at the beginning yeah, of the no fourth. Way. Yeah, there's like, no way. Because as uh, like if he's in the fourth, to me, he should be like the first pick and not the end of the fourth round. Because like I understand, you know, I, I feel like in the first five or six rounds, you should reach for at least one or tight end or a quarterback to put you ahead at either one of those two positions. Because if you end up like mill the packer below and both it's going to be so hard to make it up yeah you'll have a great bench but you know what they'll be they'll be your bench you know you only have like most leagues only have one flex so yeah um zach Ertz second in targets last season with 135 he averaged nine targets a game which was first in the league um Philly attempts. They threw the eighth most eighth most passes last season at 613. Even though they uh, had nobody to throw to, which is crazy. His target share was only what I say only. It was 22%, which is very high. You know, it's just as high as uh, Kittle at 22 and a half. But he had so many more targets, almost 30 more targets than Kittle did. It just goes to show how many more passes that offense threw. Let's talk a little bit. I just want to throw these stats out there because they're nuts. The the combined Ertz Goddard tight end love going on in Philly. Uh, the two Ertz and got and Godert or Goddard. I'm not sure. Goddard. Uh, Goddard combined for 221 targets, commanded a 36 percent target share in that offense. More than a third of all those passes, <laughs> all 613 attempts went to those two guys and 11 wow. touchdowns. Could you imagine if that was one guy instead of two? Um, Philadelphia was second in the tight end target percentage. Almost 39% of all targets went to that position. Um, and they threw the most balls to tight ends at 235. I'm assuming so, uh, Baltimore is number one in that. Yeah. And uh nice segue. Segue. Segue me. Yeah. 
professionals. God, we like to think so. Kids, that brings us to consensus. Number four, Mark Andrews. I have him at three overall. Alex is down on him, down on him for reasons I don't understand at seven overall brings him to fourth overall for our consensus rankings. That's where ESPN has him. His current ADP is 43rd overall, which is the middle of the fourth round currently going ahead of Zach Ertz. Wow. I uh, will disagree with that. All right, so Mark Andrews, number four last year in the tight end spot. He was wide receiver 23, running back 19. So still some value there. Obviously, he was good. Seventh in receptions, fifth in targets, fifth in yards, 10 touchdowns, uh, which is the most for tight ends. And only Kenny Galladay had more touchdown catches than him from both the wide receiver and tight end spot. So I I do think you're going to see some touchdown regression from him this year because I would be surprised if he if he does duplicate that 10 touchdowns I also think that because and I know Hayden Hurst isn't there anymore I don't know how much they were running two tight end sets but I I do think that defenses are really going to try to focus on Mark Andrews Uh, they were at the end of the season last year because once they realized that that was Lamar Jackson's go-to guy that they figured out a way to stop Mark Andrews. And you kind of saw that offense actually slow down a little bit, uh, com- moderately slow down. They were still really good at the end of last my season. fantasy playoffs against Mark or against, uh, Lamar Jackson say otherwise. Well, right, yeah, yeah. But I, I just don't, I, I had Mark Andrews on my team last year. He was great throughout. He was a guy that I took a flyer on late and he ended up being a tight end one for me which is crazy value when you can do it. I just don't know if he can duplicate it. Uh, and I, for some reason, I just have a weird vibe on that offense. I, I don't know what it's going to look like after defenses have a year to, to look at it. And, and will, will they be running the ball more? You know, will, if Lamar's throwing more than he did last year, then I do like Mark Andrews. I think he's a solid tight end. Like he's going to be a solid tight end. I just don't know if he's going to be a tight end one. All right, so we've already touched on this a little bit. I do disagree. He is my tight end three. I think he's going to be fantastic. Um, He averaged six and a half targets a game, which was eighth amongst all tight ends. Um, However, Baltimore did throw the... They were last in the league in, in pass attempts. However, he was eighth at the position in targets per game. His target share was 22 percent um which was fourth at the position now let me talk to you about how much baltimore loves throwing the to the tight end position they by far and away led the league in tight end target percentage 40 42 excuse the squeak 42 four Forty-two and a half percent of all Baltimore passes were to tight ends. That's, a lot. That's insane. That's almost half of all their passes. They didn't and then you much, take, though. and then you take. No, they're not. But then you take Hayden Hurst out of it, and I think that maybe that twenty-two point three percent target share can maybe go up a little bit. At least I'm hoping. Um. Yeah, they only threw the ball, you know, just over 420 some odd times a game. And they even though they have such a high target percentage going to the tight end position, they were actually second in uh, targets to the position and as far as total number of a, of attempts. So. So I, I, I do know that you have uh, Mark Andrews rated above or ranked above Ertz. Gun to your head. Are you really going to take Andrews over Ertz? Um, I mean, Ertz Ur- has been so consistent for so long. And he's not even that old yet, but with with that offense potentially being with everybody so, healthy, it's it's it is tight. I think that might be a that uh and and Mark see like, the argument. So Mar- the Mark argument Peters had ten touchdowns last year. That's yeah. so many. So if he doesn't have those again. But he still has this target for target, the same target share that Ertz does. Granted, Ertz's offense is throwing hundreds of more balls and he had 
uh, like almost 40 more targets than Mark Andrews did. Mm -hmm. I totally get that. But like a lot of a lot of people in the professional sports analysis world last year going into last season were very down on Zach Ertz because of all of the weapons that Philadelphia had going into the season. And then all of them missed significant amounts of time. <laughs> and the only two weapons that were left for that team were Goddard and Ertz. Like, yeah, yeah, there Alshon was gone. Deshaun was gone. Aguilar was gone for stretches of time. Like they were starting Greg Ward. And like, of course I'm going to throw it to Zach Ertz instead of that guy or, you know, yeah. you know the people that they're signing off the street to fill the holes in that offense. So yeah. I'm concerned about Ertz's usage this year and, and Goddard's, you know, continued ascent. Um, I don't think that Andrews really has anybody with the departure of Hayden Hurst. So, uh, I, I think you could very easily justify taking Andrews over Ertz. Yeah, I get it. I mean, so, I mean, Andrews didn't start the year very hot and then he was kind of touchdown dependent at the end. Um, or start, you know, he started the year fine from a yards perspective, didn't have the touchdowns and then didn't really have the production and had the touchdowns at the end. So he, he was remarkably consistent throughout the year, but you know, just looking at the last couple of games uh, from week nine on targets, three, eight, four, three, six, three, seven, nine. And I, I know that that Ertz is going to have more consistently have those potential targets being thrown his way. That's why I like Ertz more than I like Andrews, because he's proven that he can do it year over year. And, yeah. uh, you know, if if Marquise Brown does take a step forward or even if they sign Antonio Brown, which is being banted about, too. You know, yeah. I, I, if they sign anybody like that, um, then I, I think that his value is is hurt more than a lot of other people. But it's all just a guess. Yeah, true. And I guess the other point of that is, you know, Marquise Brown was a rookie. And so in his second year, he could also very easily command a larger target share than he did last year. And I mean, I think a lot of people have him as like a uh, sneaky, like the underdog potential wide receiver one breakout of the year, but I don't know if they threw the ball enough, but yeah, it certainly uh, could very easily be a wide receiver too. If that happens, I mean, yeah, I'd definitely rather have Ertz than, than Andrews. Um, I mean, everybody knows how much uh, Carson Wentz likes throwing to the tight end position. So yeah, I, I don't know. Gun to my head. I, I might take Ertz. I might have to, I, I would probably, I'd probably go Kelsey Kittle, Ertz, Andrews. Yeah, I, I think I, you know, I think the first two are really tight, and I actually do think that you know I actually have Andrews considerably lower down at seven, but I, I do think that kind of these these four guys that we're talking about right here are actually really close to each other, and I think there's a line after them. So you know, as we're, we're yeah, kind of painting yeah. these guys about, yeah. Um. And that brings us to our next gentleman. So talk about AD, ADP break. We are also hitting another ADP break right here of 15 spots, 16 spots. So more than another round to get to consensus. Number five, Darren Waller. Uh, he is my sixth overall and he is your fifth overall. ESPN has him at five. His ADP is right at uh, a shave under 59. So going in the end of the fifth round. Yeah, I had Darren Waller on a team. I traded him to you last year. You loved every second of, of having him on, on your roster. The So he was tight end three last year, wide receiver 23, running back 19, second in tight end receptions, third in targets, second in yards, and he only had three touchdowns. Uh, so there that is was, oh. that that's the only reason why I actually have him ranked as high as I do is because I would, I think he's going to score a little bit more this year. I don't know if the targets are going to remain to be that high. They did sign Jason Witten and I know Jason Witten's really old and you wouldn't think it would matter all that much, but he was actually still functional last year as a tight end. Uh, he was tight end 12 last year in the Dallas offense. He had 83 targets, 500 yards. 
So I don't think that they signed Witten just to sit him. Now, if they're going to be using 12 personnel and try to get them both on the field, that's possible. But I do think it's it's there is the potential for Jason Witten to slightly bite into Darren Waller's production, which I wouldn't think is is really a thing. Um, but I they, they've added some weapons in the offseason um, through the draft and through, you know, adding Witten. And I just don't know who they're like. Carr's fine. Mariota's there. I don't know if if the NFL has passed John Gruden by and he knows how to run an offense anymore. That's that's super productive. But that offense stunk last year, except for Darren Waller and and Josh Jacobs. Thank you. Hunter Renfro was also very good while he was on the field. He got hurt. Um, so the Darren Waller experience last season was. Hi, 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 hi. Hello, Hunter Renfro. Hello. Being uh, like the slot midfield kind of target for Derek Carr last season. Low, 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 low. Oh, Hunter Renfro gets hurt. Hi, 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 hi to end the season. And so like during that lull, I was so depressed with Darren Waller. Like where were the 20, uh, the 20 point gains of old that disappeared in the middle of the season? And like the only the three touchdowns just hurt me. Um, he was third in targets with 117 at the position, fourth in targets per game at a shave under eight. Um, Las Vegas, the Las Vegas Raiders were 21st in attempts. He was third in target share at about 22 and a half percent. Um, I'm just the, the Witten hurts me a little bit and getting Hunter Renfro back. Also makes me not as excited. Um, and Darren yeah. Waller came out of nowhere last year. Yeah, like a yeah. lot of leagues, he like he wasn't even drafted. He was either a, after week one pickup when he had seven catches for seventy yards, or you know I heard Matthew Barry talking about him, so I went and picked him up before the season started, just as like a quick little flyer. But he, this guy wasn't even drafted, and all of a sudden, you know, obviously he was very good. He was tight end three last year, but. It's one of those things. Can you do you think you can trust him to be a tight end one? And I, I think the ADP drop from Andrews to Wallers is somewhat justified. It just comes down to where you where are you gonna take him? Yeah, I mean, if you think back to the beginning of last season, like they had Antonio Brown and he was gonna be so good for them. Mm-hmm. And then all of those shenanigans started, and so they cut him. And they had no really they never really recovered at the receiver position because of it. But then you go out and you get guys like Henry Ruggs and Lynn Bowden. And I feel like, you know, Henry Ruggs is a lock and loaded starter, at, you know, going into the season. And so now that you've, you know, rearmed at the wide receiver position, maybe you aren't as dependent as you were at tight end and then you add a tight end. Uh, yeah, I I could see Waller slipping from where he was last season. Um, oh, I'm so excited for our next guy. Consensus number six, Evan Ingram. I have him at fifth overall. You have him at ninth. His ESPN currently has him at sixth. His ADP ADP price check 71 and a half. So going at the end of the sixth round, talk about what I think is some really good value for somebody who I also think could be a top three tight end this season. Yeah. I thought he was going to be great last year and then he got hurt. He was great before he got hurt. So uh, dude, for the, through the first three weeks last season. Oh man, dude. I know through I'm the there. first three weeks last season, who had more points, Evan Ingram or Travis Kelsey? Evan Ingram did. Evan Ingram or George yeah. Kittle? Evan Ingram. He had the most points. He had two 20 point games in the first three weeks. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was tight end one after three weeks. So he, he was seventh in tight end points per game when he played. Um, overall, he was tight end 19 last year, uh, 13th in receptions, 14th in targets, 15th in yards, and he missed eight games. So that's pretty incredible that he was still you know, top third, you know, top 12. And in, in a lot of those areas or just outside of it is, is crazy. Uh, so he missed eight games. Uh, when he did play, he was a top tight end, uh, top 10 tight end, um, 
five out of the eight weeks that he played. Uh, he's only 25, but he, he needs to stay healthy. <laughs> yeah. So that that's his biggest, biggest issue is the first, you know, six, five weeks when he played, he had the most points. He was tight end number one. It was like 13 and a half points or something like that, which is more than everybody else. Um, I'm a big fan. Always have been. Just has to stay healthy. Dan- Danny Jones is going to look for him. And uh, he's just a guy where he just needs to stay healthy. And I'll say it over and over again is can he stay healthy? Can he stay healthy? Can he stay healthy? Yeah. And that's, I think that's also banked into his, uh, baked into his ranking at uh tight end sixth overall for us. Like after you get through the first three to four guys, like, man, you know, they start all kind of looking the same and they all have kind of the same upside. Yep. Um, he was tied for second in targets per game. However, when he did play at eight and a half targets per game, uh, the giants were ninth in total uh, pass attempts last season. He was uh, 15th in target share at 11%, but that's over the entire season. Obviously he missed several games. Uh, let's talk about how much the giants like the tight ends. They commanded almost a 23% target share in that offense. And Caden Smith replaced Evan Ingram and averaged seven targets a game in the games that he replaced him. Nice. So like, give me the giants tight end one. If it's Ingram, I'll take him. If it's not, I'm putting in Caden Smith. Like I would absolutely roll the dice on that. Um, the giants were ninth in tight end target percentage at uh, a shave under 24% and six in total tight end targets at 140. So, uh, you know, top 10 offense in terms of tight end targeting and opportunity love to get the tight end one in that offense, especially, um, you know, high on Danny Jones. Um, if I, as long as X guy stays healthy, could definitely turn in what I think is a top three caliber type season. I mean, we saw it in the first three weeks last season, he was tight end one. So, um, and that's a great value at the end of the sixth round. If he stays healthy, like, that's a, almost like a league winning kind of thing. Assuming the offense doesn't change under Jason Garrett. A whole I'm sorry. Lot. If he stays healthy. Yeah. And yeah, the but, offense doesn't change. Yeah. But J- I mean, Jason Garrett's always had plays drawn up for Jason Witten too. Yep. So it's not like he's been totally anti tight end, uh, almost like a Mike McCarthy would be to a certain extent, right? Where he's right. never had a good tight end to get the ball to. And I, I don't think Jason Garrett's going to have an issue. And Again, young quarterbacks love finding their their tight ends in the middle of the field. He's just got to stay healthy. Yep. And he Uh, he was lined up as a wide receiver a lot last year before he even got hurt because he he's got the speed to be on the outside. He's not your prototypical. You know, when, when you're just watching a Giants game, he actually looks like a wide receiver when he's lined up to the outside. He's just freaking just a monster one. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see where it lines up when they get all their receivers back, but yeah. Yeah. Um, moving on consensus tight end number seven, Hayden Hurst. I have him at ninth overall. Alex has him at sixth ESPN has him all the way down at tight end 17. This That's season. absurd. However, Great. Oh my God. The world disagrees. ESPN. His average draft position is 111, which is early 10th round. I'm sorry, but tight end 17 is not getting drafted. So the world disagrees and he's currently going in the 10th round. Now, why is Hayden Hurst a middle of the pack tight end one? So last year, 34th tight end. Uh, didn't even mm, really, yeah. didn't even really register on the, Hype him up. Let's the go. Seat. Yeah. 35th what's, and what's 35th up, 34? In receptions, 37th in targets. Oh God. I'm so impressed. 28th in yards, two touchdowns. What a, what a beast, right? Monster. Uh, yeah, he's replacing Austin Hooper in Atlanta, who was uh tight end six last year. Uh, let me just read you Austin Hooper stat lines, uh, 75 catches, 787 yards, six touchdowns, 97 targets, uh, which, oh, by the way, is good for the sixth most targets. He was the sixth best tight end last year. I'm literally just 
To project his numbers, I am dropping him straight into Austin Hooper and what he did last year. He has the pedigree. Uh, Hayden Hurst was a former first-round pick, and the Ravens just couldn't figure out a place for him to play with with Mark Andrews being there. And we've talked about it before, but the Atlanta Falcons throw the ball a ton. and Most in the league. Matt Ryan loves finding his tight end. So that's I'm literally just taking what has Austin Hooper been doing the last couple of years, who's been really a tight end one, and I'm just dropping Hunter uh, Hayden Hurst into that Hunter Hurst. Helmsley, wrestler, Triple H. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Wrestling, it just it just comes out of my mouth sometimes. I can't, can't even help help keep it in. So Hayden Hurst, Helmsley. Uh, I'm looking for a, for a big year out of out of Triple H in the Falcons offense. There we go. I like that. Call him Triple H. Triple H. Um, yeah, Austin Hooper, man. Uh, sixth in targets per game. Atlanta threw the more threw more passes than any other team in the league last season with 684. He was seventh in target share uh, at 14, just over 14 percent, and scored six touchdowns as you mentioned. Atlanta 20th in tight end target percentage, uh, so not high at 18 and a half percent. But you know what? It doesn't matter if you're throwing the ball almost 700 times a season. Your target <laughs> share doesn't need to be extremely high. Um, you know, so they're 20th in target, tight end target percentage, but they're ninth in tight end targets at 121. So give me the, the number one tight end in that offense, assuming that they keep passing the ball as much as they did last year. Um, yeah. Hayden Hurst, Triple H. Triple H, yeah. I'm, I mean, it makes me like him even more now that I can relate him to a wrestler. It's time to play the game, go. baby. Let's go. Well, you can get him in the 10th round. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that. Uh, especially if ESPN is going to keep him down at 16, that's a guy that you can kind of bank on him just being there towards the end of the draft. If, if you miss on the first couple guys and a, and a run already happened, you're like, oh, son, of a, throw. son of a throw. biscuit. Like, He's the guy that you'd want to take a little bit later to lock in at least some sort of value. I think more so than the guys we're going to talk about here. Uh, the, the You're next, going to the disagree with yourself because consensus number eight, Tyler Higby, which is Alex's fourth overall tight end. Uh, my 12th overall tight end. So we disagree on Mr. Higby. I'm excluding Higby from what I just said. Just oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So thanks for the preface. Yeah. Uh, ESPN has Higby at seventh overall. His ADP is going just to shave in front of Hayden Hurst at about 107th overall or late ninth round compared to early 10th for triple H. Now, <laughs> Tell me why you like Higby as your fourth overall tight end. I love that we're going to call him Triple H. It makes me so happy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, I mean, you've, you've talked about it in, in the, the wide receiver podcast. We were talking about Robert Woods. And Probably we're talking about both Cooper, wide receiver podcasts. Cooper Cup. And so I don't know how much I'm really going to talk about why I love Higby. Other than the fact is that when you said that he was playing more at the end of the season and his numbers extrapolated out to wide receiver two the last like six weeks of the season, I can't help but just like. Yes, please. I We're going to be a, a friendly, a family friendly podcast here. What if if he does what he did at the end of last year, then there's no reason why tight end four isn't reasonable for him. If he. Yeah. If he doesn't, then that that sucks. But I think the value is so much, so much there. I, again, this is a potential pick. Um, I have him at four because I think he's going to be really good. That doesn't mean you need to draft him at four uh, because no. of because of where the ADPs are. I you you were the one that really sold me on Higby. So when all of a sudden I look at our rankings and you have him at what twelve? 12 sir i was like oh please do explain after schooling me on why higby is gonna hurt hurt robert woods or hurt cooper cups value and then all of a sudden we we have higby down at down at 12 all right so from week 12 on higby had 62 targets or more than 10 targets a game which you wouldn't make him like the only tight end to average 10 targets on a season if he kept it up um 
not more, just over 90 yards a game. He had 48 catches and two touchdowns. However, asterisk, asterisk, however, Gerald Everett was hurt. In, Ger- in games that Gerald Everett played, he was averaging a shave under six targets a game from weeks one to 11 and had two touchdowns in that time. Now, yes, I feel like they're going to be running more 12 personnel. We've talked about that, but Gerald Everett will still be on the field. And you also, uh, you know, bake in the fact that they did draft Bryson Hopkins out of Purdue in round four. Bryson Hopkins is 6'5", 245. His stat line in his last year of college was 61 catches for 830 yards and seven touchdowns. The guy ran a 4'6", 46640, uh, which was second fastest at the tight end position at the combine. Um, he had more... 100 yard games over the last two years than Jalen Rager year Jalen Rager did during his career at TCU. Like, I think the guy's going to see the field. I'm not sure who like the de facto number one is out of Everett and Higby. And I don't really quite know which one Goff is going to like more when they're both on the field together. And then you couple that with, I think a talented, a talented rookie tight end, and I, I think I'm just a little worried, a little worried about Higby being able to continue that performance. So that's why I have him down at 12. I, I could be wrong. I mean, it's just for me, it's just a lot of concerns, really. It's like I totally think one a, a part of me thinks he could absolutely continue that. However, there are these other things that make me concerned about him. And so for that reason, I have him at 12. I wouldn't be surprised or shocked if he ended up as, you know, a top six tight end. But he has a lot of questions that other guys don't have in the way of his opportunity was granted because of injury last season. So does he keep the job? I don't know because it wasn't his going into it. Yeah, I again, if if I'm not getting one of the top three three guys here, then I'm probably just holding off and and waiting. Very similar to quarterbacks, where if if I don't get one of the top two or three guys, I'm just waiting until the end and, and dart throwing because I, I don't <laughs> know how much value there is in in taking some of these guys in in rounds eight, nine, ten when you can just you know wait till round twelve and see who's left especially because there's not there's not a lot of teams that are taking more than one tight end in a draft. So essentially you're going to end up with one of these guys that we're talking about in this range. Uh, and so I think Higby has the best value. Now I can actually say this. Higby has the best value going forward of anybody that, we, that we're going to talk about uh, c- coming up here in the, in the next uh, three to four guys. Uh, consensus number nine, Mike Gesicki. You and I both have him ranked at eighth overall. ESPN has him down at 14. His current ADP is 140th overall or the middle of the 12th round. And the last pick before kicker and defense. Oof, rough. So uh, tell me about why you might like Mike Gesicki. Mike Gesicki. Uh, 11 tight end last year, wide receiver 55, running back 40, if you were to translate it into where he would be in other positions. Uh, 12th in reception, 7th in targets, 12th in yards, 5 touchdowns, which happens to be the same amount as Kelsey and Kittle last year. Um, I'm actually comfy with him here, uh, regardless of who the quarterback is, um, whether it's Fitzpatrick or if it is Tua. Tua might be... um, You're comfy? Yeah, I'm comfy with it. Yeah, because uh, you know, a lot of times it's going to get comfy on your couch with Jared Co- or with Mike Gesicki. Yeah, so think about the most comfortable. Do you wear a blanket on your couch when you sit on it, Jason? Yes, absolutely. Do My house have, is an ice box. Do you have a most comfortable blanket that you always choose to use when you sit on the couch and have your dog curl up on your lap? Yeah, especially when I'm feeling Gesicki. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> that was an 
another pun. We're that a pun good. factory today. Yeah, that was that was really good. So the tight end, especially for rookie quarterbacks, is that most comfortable blanket. And so if if two is the quarterback, I think Gasicki's probably going to have, you know, he's gonna have less targets than Devontae Park does probably, but it, it's going to be relatively close because those tight ends are that security blanket for the rookie quarterback. And Brian Fitzpatrick, we saw what he did with Kasicki last year. Um, he started coming on more at the end of the year. And I think Kasicki's a really good route runner. Um, and once they started actually throwing him the ball last year, he was performing ad- admirably. So I, I like Kasicki. I think he's, he's fine. Um, so just he's he's comfortable. I'm I'm comfy with him in in that spot. Yeah, Miami was seventh in pass attempts. Uh, he had the sixth highest target share at fourteen and a half percent. Five touchdowns. Sixteenth uh, in tight end target percentage as an offense at nineteen. 19- of all of their passes went to tight ends and 12th in tight end targets as a team at 116 tight end targets last season. Uh, He could be very good. He's he's just he's like the perennial sleeper the last couple of years. Everybody's just waiting for him to break out. Last year was Devontae Parker after Preston Williams went down. We'll we'll see if uh, if Tua likes Mike Kosicki this year. Moving yeah, on. And, and, and if Gesicki is similar to wide receivers, you know, this is going to be his third year. He's drafted in 2018. And so will he have that third year year leap potentially? I also just wanted to, you know, as I kind of bring up his targets the last like six, seven weeks, because he wasn't really used the first couple of weeks as they were trying to figure out what, like they were one of the worst teams in football the first couple of, of weeks last year. And so, once they started just airing it out and letting Fitzpatrick do his thing, from week nine last year on, targets were six, 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 seven, seven, five, eight, twelve, and seven. Um, that is, I, I'm very good with with that. That you know, for a tight end that you can get a little bit later on, if he has that floor of the targets, and again, we already talked about, it, if you have top twelve targets, you're going to be a top twelve tight end. That would translate into that spot. Yep. Um. And after you're done feeling gesicky, you can get up and get some Jared Cook consensus tight end 10 and Jared Cook yourself a meal. Hey, oh, <clears throat> this is sinking fast. Yeah, uh, should have stopped, <laughs> stopped while you're behind. All right. I have uh, I have Jared Cook at tight end seven this year. Alex has him at 10. ESPN has him at 12. His current average draft position is about 110th overall, going early in the 10th round ahead of guys like Mike Gesicki. Um, tell me about Jared Cook. I don't, I don't like Jared Cook as much as you do. Um, The reason for it, you know, when I was playing him last year and I saw somebody starting sharing, somebody was starting Jared Cook against me. I was like, great. He's like the perennial disappointment. He like, he's been around forever. He's 33, but I feel like he has that, you know, he's been in the league for like 10 years and it's like, oh, it's Jared Cook. So I'm, I'm good with that. But he was tight. You know, he's tight end seven last year, 14th in, in uh, tight end reception, 16th in targets, eighth in yards, but he had nine touchdowns. And I swear every time That's I was what playing propped him up. Yeah. Every time I was playing him, he freaking scored a touchdown. It yeah. was it was stupid. So I I don't know if the targets, you know, again, he was the one guy that was in the top 12 that did not have top 12 targets with only having the 16th most. So I, I don't know if those targets are there to sustain him um, in, in that offense going forward. But he was so consistent. He was so consistent. After a slow start, uh, he had 10 points in every game uh, after week four. So... I, he, he missed two games in there, but he, he, he had 10, 10 points or more in every game except one. So that's remarkably consistent. Yeah. So if, if he's going to do that again, then yeah, he should be ranked um, where you have him. Uh, I, I just don't know if, if he can. I, I don't, those touchdowns just aren't going to be there. 
Yeah, it'll be very difficult, I think, for him to reproduce. He'll have to do that with the touchdowns to have a chance. Um, I'm putting him at seventh because I think after, you know, the first six, I think he's a big play guy and I think he's extremely efficient and his numbers bear that out. He was there you go. <laughs> <clears throat> He was 20th in targets per game. He only <laughs> averaged just over four targets a game, but the guy had nine touchdowns. He was, um, he had, he was only 16th in target share at just over 11%. So like he didn't command a lot of target share. Um, his targets are only 60. He only had 65 targets on the season. He converted nine out of 65 targets into touchdowns. Like that's, that's insane. That's an insane conversion rate, um, which he just broke big plays. Um, New Orleans was 15th in tight end target percentage at a shave under 20 at a shave under 20%. They were 19th in tight end targets. So it's not like they even really, you know, targeted the position highly. It's just that everybody's so worried about Kamara and Michael Thomas that, Hey, Jared cook is a huge mix mismatch. And so he's running free down the field and has his guy burned because he's a mo- like, he's so athletically gifted. Um, so. Yeah. I like to your point, I, I don't know if he can duplicate what he did last year. That It was just incredible what, what he was doing. But if he can, I mean, good luck to you. Um, yeah. But yeah, definitely a touchdown regression candidate. Um, and because of that, I'm, I'm very confident at this point that I don't think he's going to be on a single one of my teams this year. Yep. Moving on consensus, tight end 11, Noah Font. I have him at 10th overall. Alex, Alex has him at 11. ESPN has him at 11th overall. His current ADP is 106 and a half going in the late ninth round. I think that's... I don't know, a, maybe a, a smidge high. I'm not sure. Ninth round is okay. Um, tell me about Noah Fant. Yeah, that's where people are just like, what do I need to fill out my roster? I'm going to take a I tight end. I still have a tight end. It's the ninth round. React. Yeah. Uh, so why, uh, tight end 16 last year, uh, 18th in receptions, 15th in targets, 13th in yards, uh, three touchdowns. Uh, he is a Iowa tight end. And so it's... Go Hawks! Point- so at some point he's going to be really good mm. and he had very similar numbers to George Kittle, uh, his rookie year. So I, I think Noah is, you took the wind out of my sails. He's good. Sorry. He's going to be so I'll go for it. He's going to, I think he's going to be good because drew Locke's going to look for, for him. This is, he's not technically a rookie anymore, but he's still a young quarterback and um, uh, he's super talented. He's just a, big mf and he can run people over and he's fast. So, yeah. uh, I, I, I like the upside for him. Yeah. Um, comes from, uh, I believe a, t- a tight end factory tight end and lineman is really what the Hawkeyes put out. Um, go Hawks, by the way, uh, graduated in 16 from the university of Iowa. Um, Kittle's rookie season, 63 targets, 43 catches, 515 yards, two touchdowns, started seven of 15 games. Uh, Next year was like a top three tight end. Noah Fant's rookie season, 66 targets, 40 catches, 562 yards, excuse me, three touchdowns, started 11 of 16 games. Like Noah Fant could be Noah Fantabulous this season. Um... Uh, this is amazing. I've, I am so on today with these awful word play f- puns. It's, 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 it's quite impressive, actually. <laughs> um, he, I just, I want them to throw more passes. And I talked about it in our wide receiver two episode. Uh, Denver was 27th in total pass attempts last season, like at 504 attempts, like that has to come up. His target share is 13%. Like they added more weapons. So I'm worried about font being able to command a larger, a larger target share. Now, granted, I'm assuming that that target share got higher towards the end of the season when he was on the field more after becoming acclimated to the offense. Denver was 10th 
10th in tight end target percentage at 22.2%. Like if he, if he can get higher to that 22 point and claim more of the team's targets at the position, he'll be in a lot better shape. And they were 15th in total targets, uh, at the position at 107. So like he needs to get a lot more of those 107 targets than the, what I have him down for 66 targets last season. So he needs more of those in yeah, that I, own offense. I feel like, you know, especially where he's being taken and what he's given you so far in his career, I think there's going to be a lot of, you know, he's going to give you like a 15 or 16 point week. And then the next week's going to be like two points. Um, yeah. I, I think he's going to have a really tough time being consistent. Uh, and, and that's why we have him where we do. Um, it's t- until he shows that that consistency on a week to week basis. I don't think you can draft him higher than this. Yeah, he needs to clearly demonstrate that he's like in the top two of Drew Locke's favorite targets this season. Yep, um, no doubt. Consensus number 12. I'm maybe a little surprised he's this low or maybe I'm surprised he's this high. I'm just interested to see how this goes. Consensus number 12. Alex and I both have him at 13th overall. Rob Gronkowski. Um, ESPN has Gronk at 10th. His ADP is guess what round Gronk is currently being drafted in eighth early seventh beginning of the seventh round pick 76 that's ahead of Noah Fant ahead of Jared Cook ahead of Mike Kosicki and ahead of Tyler Higby ahead of Hayden Hurst and Right behind Evan Ingram at 71 and a half. Gronk is going at 76. I'll tell you this. If if somebody's going to draft him there, there's no way he's going to be on one of my teams because I don't know how many football players have ever sat out a full year and come back and be productive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the. So last year he was tight end uh, infinity bajillion because um, he didn't play. He had no catches. He had no targets. He had no yards. He had no touchdowns. And I don't know. I mean, he's historically one of the greatest tight ends of all time. Uh, Tom Brady is obviously his quarterback. Still, they're probably going to be on the same page. Um, again, I'm, I'm higher on Austin Hooper than I am on Gronk. He would, he would have been my 12th. Um, I think there's too many mouths to feed in Tampa Bay between Mike Evans and Godwin. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if OJ Howard actually is a better fantasy option than Gronk is this year. Um, Cause he's younger and he's faster and he's been in that offense the last couple of years. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, I love Gronk. He has been a stalwart on my team uh, for for years and I love the Gronk spikes and I love him being weird. He's also a former WWE champion to loop in another reference uh, to wrestling on that tonight. Um, so I, I just don't know if he's going to be able to be productive, honestly, and he's always been hurt too. So, you know, it might be one of the situations where they kind of keep the, the, Think of a nice car. I'm, I'm going to use my 1979 Lincoln Continental Town Car, my first car. You're, you're going to keep it in the garage until you have to bring it out and, and let it loose. And so until he can prove that he can stay healthy, I don't know if he's a good regular season tight end or if they're just getting him for kind of a stretch run where they can unleash him on the league. Because that's kind of what the Patriots did, where they didn't use him until they had to the last couple of years. And so I don't know how different that that's going to actually be. And that's why I could see OJ Howard being better than him. There's no way that I'm going to take him uh, in the seventh round. Yeah. I mean, there, to me, there's just too much talent in the tight end room for that offense. Like Cameron Brait last season had 56 targets. OJ Howard had 53. They combined for 109. Their tight end, the target share for just the two of them, um, was 17.3% of all passes in that offense. Uh, Break commanded eight or just a shave under 9% and Howard at eight and a half. They combined for five touchdowns last year. Break with four, OJ Howard with one. Um, 
Tampa Bay was 16th in tight end target percentage at a shave over 19% and 10th in total tight end targets at 117. Like, look, I understand that Jamison, um, that Jameis, excuse me, rather, that Jameis Winston was the quarterback for that offense, but like that offense doesn't change. And there's so many mouths to feed. And you have two of the best, are like arguably the best wide receiver core in Godwin and Mike Evans. I don't know how. And then you have two other extremely talented tight ends. Like, I don't know how Gronk is a weekly starter, let alone somebody that you get in the seventh round. It's only name recognition yep. because when he played with Grady, he went over a thousand yards in four of nine seasons and had double digit touchdowns in five of nine seasons, including 17, nine years ago. He's 31 years old, multiple injuries. Like I would, I'd rather draft. I mean, I, yeah, if he's tight end 13 for me, which means I'm not drafting him because I have 12 guys and you generally like only 12 tight ends are going to get taken unless you have the one team that drafts two tight ends, but like you, the one league where somebody in it drafts two tight ends in it, but yeah, but yeah, and, and you're not going to reach up and, and grab him in the seventh round. Like no, there, there's man. just no, no chance of that happening. And as you know, I'm actually surprised we don't have him lower um, after kind of talking through this. Yeah, and, and you he know, might be, and it's possible we, we do move him down um, just to kind of run off some people that we have not talked about. Um, that that were good last year. Austin Hooper was was the sixth ranked tight end last year. Hunter Henry was the ninth ranked tight end. Dallas Goddard was ten. Jason Witten was twelve. Greg Olson was thirteen. Um, so there, there is a bunch of guys that you can still get that, that are going to be fine, probably, um, and even potentially yeah. better, better than Gronk. And, you know, we haven't talked about Jimmy Graham. And so at, as weird as it sounds, you know, the, Bear, the Bears are going to throw to a tight end. Um, they, whether it's Cole Komet or it's, or it's, uh, Whoever they're Jimmy Graham. They're, well, yeah, but they have like eight other tight ends too on the roster. <laughs> right, right. So, like, you know, they run a very similar offense to the Eagles where they have that very high tight end share. So I wouldn't be surprised if a tight end of the Bears is actually fantasy serviceable this year either, um, because Jason kind of ran down what the Eagles offense did um and how dependent they are. So I, I would not be surprised to see a Bears tight end kind of kind of wiggle in. I don't know who it's going to be. I wouldn't draft them, but I wouldn't be able to, or I would. I could see somebody after week two kind of emerging and, and figuring that that situation out too. Yeah, the uh, the tight end that I have ranked higher than Gronk is Chris Herndon for the Jets. Uh, he just hasn't delivered because of suspensions and injuries and other things. Um, but when he plays, he's general generally serviceable. And so I think with that maybe with the loss of Robbie Anderson, Chris Herndon could be, you know, more or less the guy. Um, and then I think my my sneaky tight end might either be. I don't know. Hunter Henry or Tyrod. I'm not a huge fan there. And then, however, I, I, I might like me some Blake Jarwin from uh, Dallas this season. Now that, uh, uh, Witten's gone, but we'll see. Yeah. I, I love Sam, uh, Darnold and just his potential. He hasn't been able to put it together, but again, the, the jets were seven and nine last year somehow. Um, and if, if Chris Herndon can like, their other receivers are Crowder, Rashad Perriman, and Denzel Mims. So he's going to have to throw to somebody. And so if, you know, Herndon stays healthy, you know, that's, I'm, I'm cool with that. Right. Well, with that, we are done with tight ends, done with rankings because we are not doing a kicker defense show because we don't what? want to bore everyone. Oh, I, know. I was so looking forward to that. <laughs> thank you for staying with us as we go deep on tight ends stay tuned as we are going to start mock drafting now it's time to start talking about draft sleepers guys that are not being properly valued that we think you should potentially be targeting this season please stick with us visit our website for all of our rankings for all of our positions www.thefantasyfootballsackos.com and also please follow us on all of the social medias at the ff sackos everywhere our website is basically karma sutra for fantasy football players we have all the positions ranked <laughs> 
Good night. Good night.